A very good morning to everybody. Once again, I haven't been able to do an introduction because we found the Tanswala female. She's up in a beautiful jackalberry tree and she's got a, looks like what, like a daika kill. She seems to be getting pestered by a lot of crows. So she's a little bit shy, so we're just going to take our time and let her relax. You can hear those crows calling there now. Such a beautiful female. Also so great to get this female early in the morning. With that morning light coming through. What a pleasure. Once again I've got uh, my good friend Mike. From Africa Direct Tour Operators with me. He's going to add a little bit for us this morning. No, I can't tell you how amazing it is to start a day with a leopard with a kill hoisted in a tree. You know, we have people who do safaris you know, 10 times. Yeah, we do get to see leopard. But they are known as solitary, elusive, nocturnal, forest-dwelling cats. But you always have that quintessential idea of having or seeing a leopard hoist a carcass in a tree. But we get to see a brief glimpse of them here and they're not like this. So, yeah, to start off with a leopard in a tree with a kill first thing in the morning is just ridiculous. But you can see her flicking the tip of her tail like that. It's showing a little bit of aggravation. With the crows pestering her, it was <clears throat> one of the ways that we found her was she had obviously had it hoisted in another tree, which was in the open air, and it was a little bit too exposed for her liking. And the crows discovered her and started landing in the tree, and she came down with her carcass and moved out of the open area, headed towards the river and we saw the crows moving from tree to tree following her. And we followed the crows and then we found her. So it was great that we got another bush clue. But her tail was wagging with these crows and us, but she seems to start settling nicely. She's not looking at us anymore. It's always beautiful when you get an animal in the morning and you're watching it and you're filming it and you hear the baboons calling in the background and you hear the Franklins calling for that morning chorus. Everyone's getting active. You know, they've been sleeping most of the night and now they're getting active. It's better than any cup of coffee I've ever had. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. I was a little bit tired when I got up this morning. Mike was also a little bit tired. But you get a leopard and your adrenaline starts to rush. And you're just so excited to see this animal and what beautiful photography it is. And now she's relaxed nicely. Her tail's not sticking up anymore. She's resting her head against the darker and it's just beautiful. Yeah, Vic, um, I've got this uh, female leopard. She's uh, in the jackalberry tree at the moment. Um, I just want to keep it at one vehicle, so I'm going to make space as soon as you get in here, but she's lying in the beautiful morning light on this jackalberry tree. Myself and Michael up here on Corpies. We're just scanning for a cheetah, just to give you an idea of where we are. Right up here in these beautiful open gabbro areas. I always say you should never come through here and not scan for a cheetah. Out of the ten times you do come through here, nine there might not be a cheetah. But on that tenth there might be a beautiful cheetah sitting on top of a 
termite mound. So Mike and myself, we're busy scanning, looking for cheetah. If we don't find anything, we're going to carry on up towards sky beds. It's a beautiful, large tusker, big bull elephant with massive ivory. What a beautiful individual this is. You don't normally get these big bull ellies with such large and beautiful ivory. Quite an old and mature bull here. Great to spend time with him. I always wonder how many miles or how many kilometers the feet have walked. Elephants probably between the age of about, I would say, 45 and 55, and his absolute maturity. And I think he's covered a lot of distance in his life. A lot of stories to tell us. Yeah, we've come to have a look at the dam, if there's any new visitors. And yesterday, Alistair was wondering why we couldn't find those lines, and it's because he didn't bring coffee with didn't make it, but today he has surprised me and spoiled me with a cup of coffee. Now I'm sure everything is going to go much better. On the way home, one of the guides managed to pick up on the Mbiri Pride. It's only five lionesses. One's probably still with that open male and mating, but they moving back into their core territory. They were up around scar beds. Now they're starting to move back. Yeah, I can't believe that this is the fourth different group that we've actually viewed in two drives. The prides seem relatively fragmented, um, which it's very interesting to see they're normally so gregarious and tightly knit as a pride but to find six here and cubs up there and males intruding so what makes it so exciting to go out in the morning is all the chess pieces have moved for with regards to the dynamics of it's a little less um, I'd say complicated for solitary animals they just stick to themselves and make sure they survive the night and feed but with social animals there is a structure within it and when there's dominance it makes it a little tricky so when we get up in the morning it's like reading the newspaper with the tracks on the ground and then seeing new males in an area and a fragmented pride so every day is like a new day with a new story and us having to put all the pieces of the puzzle together and it's terribly exciting so now we've just been given another piece with six um, of the adults, or five of them, and as the days unfold, we'll we'll see how it all fits together. Well, I've got um, guests arriving at Nswalu Safari Lodge this afternoon, which I'm terribly excited about. Um, but that means that my time running around with Alistair finding stuff is coming to an end. But I've We've been so successful with all of the big hairies and scaries like lion and leopard and elephant but I kind of also wanted to end off with saying all of the little things in between like the general game that we haven't been able to share with you has been very evident. The general game here in Tinswalu is amazing. The zebra and kudu and giraffe and warthogs and impala that fit all those tiny little gaps in between the high profile game is what makes this such a a great safari destination is where the habitat changes all consistently, which so it's aesthetically pleasing all the time. Um, the excitement of the high profile game is incredible and the success rate is very high. But also just the, the reality of it were an authentic wildlife destination where the general game is amazing and the bird life is incredible. So it's it's exactly why we make sure that people 
definitely come to have a, an authentic wildlife experience at Tinswalu and I just, it was really great hanging out with my good friend Alistair. I'm very jealous and ha I'm very envious that he gets to go out and do the virtual safari for all of you. And he promised me that he had edited my grey hair out of this video. <laughs>